All right, welcome back to another video. So today we're gonna to be talking about a bottom palm, which I actually think is better than a top palm, since a top palm is, uh, I would say, more exposed compared to a bottom palm. For a bottom palm, you have to cover up the entire deck uh, to cover the palm, whereas the top palm, it's, it's kind of up in the open, but you know, it's whatever. So the palm we're gonna be talking about is the Hofzinser bottom palm, uh, which you can do with a single card or multiple cards. Personally, I like it more as a multiple card card palm, but you know, you can do it with a card, it doesn't really matter. The Hofzinser bottom palm was first created by Johann Nepomuk Johann Nepomuk Hofzinser back in 1910, well it was first published back then, uh, in a book called Kartenkurst, uh, uh, it's in German, I don't know how to speak German, but it's basically a translation for uh, card arts. So, uh, but the right, uh, the place where I learned it from is from Expert Card Technique, so it's somewhere over there, uh, back in 1940 by uh, Gene Newgard and Frederick Browie. Uh, yeah, let's just jump right into the main mechanics of it. So, uh, I mean, at its core, it's relatively simple. You just need to get a uh, pinky break below the bottom card, and the way that you do it is relatively simple. It's basically like a pinky count, but like you just do it until the bottom card or, you know, you just pull down the bottom card. That's uh, Ed Marlowe's pinky pull down, so yeah. The very next thing that you're gonna do is that you're gonna come over with your right hand and hold the deck in a biddle grip, like so. And what you're gonna do is that you're gonna let go with your index finger over here. And this will cause the bottom card to spread bring away from the rest of the deck because right now your index finger is the only thing that's keeping uh, the break you know flush with the rest of the deck so if you release your index finger you'll notice that it actually juts out just a bit and using your pinky just contact the upper right corner of this card so now you have sort of like an ordinance break or well it is technically an ordinance break but you get my point the very next thing you're going to do is that you're going to contact this bottom left corner with uh, where you traditionally palm a card. So just uh, you know, just as a demo, where you find your palming position is you hold the uh, is that you hold the card in a card palm. So this is my card palm, and you just shift it into a normal dealer's grip. So that's where you find the place where you uh, you would traditionally palm. So once again, get a pinky break, expand the break over here, uh, contact it with your pinky finger, and contact it with uh, the fat of your thumb or whatever it's called, right? The next thing that you're gonna do is that you're going to advance your left hand forward. So now that uh, now the now the card is basically being held by your right hand pinky and the left hand uh, thumb fat or whatever you want to call it. So this swivels, this is basically what's happening. This moves uh, the card in a uh, longitudinal position, sort of, right? So you're over here. So you're basically just going to swivel the card into a palm using your pinky. So you're over here and you're going to swivel it forward as you palm the card. That's basically what it is, right? So once again, you have a pinky break through a pinky pull down. You expand the break, you contact it with your uh, pinky finger. You come over with the fat of your thumb and your hand moves forward before applying pressure to palm the card. And that's that. That's the uh, single card uh, Hofzinser, yeah, Hofzinser bottom palm. Now, for a multiple card bottom palm, it's relatively the same, right? You have uh, you have like a break underneath, uh, well, above the amount of cards that you want to palm. Here, you have uh, you expand the break, you contact it with your pinky, and you basically just do the same thing, except now it's just with more cards, right? I mean, that was five cards, so yeah. Thank you. 
So this is just an add-on. Uh, for the half sensor bottom palm, what you want to do is that you want to be careful of this pinky. I know how tempting it is to just have your pinky, you know, swivel outwards like so. But personally, I don't really like that at all, right? So look at what happens when you move your pinky to help facilitate the palm, right? This. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan because your pinky is the only finger that's moving in your right hand. So it becomes this very disgusting action of having this like, I don't know, it just doesn't flow that well. So personally, I wouldn't move the pinky, but if you really do want to move the pinky, which I wouldn't recommend, just like shift it so that they don't see the pinky moving, right? But then you're gonna have some uh, some other ugly problem of your hand, of your body shifting just to hide the pinky motion. So again, I don't recommend it, but if you do develop it as a bad habit, do note that that's a thing. But first off, it shouldn't be a bad habit in the first place because you know, it's, you know, it's, <laughs> it's there, right? It's, it shouldn't, yeah. <laughs> but that's about it for this segment. Now, one gripe that I have with the move is that you need to advance your left hand forward in order to palm the cards, which isn't necessarily that good, right? Because uh, your hand starts off in the back and then kind of stops there just to uh, just to palm the cards, which is kind of weird. But there are ways of covering uh, the uh, the motion, which I'm going to teach you right now. So there are ways of covering uh, the Hobson's or bottom palm, which uh, you know I, I use once every now and then. So you know, get your get your break underneath how many cards that you want. Here, swivel the cards out, palm it, and under the guise of moving an object or something, that's going to be uh, your cover for the forward motion. Another thing for the cover is that if you want, if you swivel it forward, you can actually go into an overhand shuffle over here. And that'll cover up the motion quite nicely because for an overhand motion, uh, it's relatively simple. You do this, right? You, you just turn it, turn the deck upwards or like that. But for the uh, for the cover uh, for as a cover for the Hobson's or bottom palm, you just do a forward motion as you turn the deck up. So it's largely the same, but you know it's there. If you're afraid of uh, the, uh, of the cards flashing during your overhand shuffle, what you can do is that you can actually basically cop the cards, right? So you have your break over here and then you rotate it, but you're going to over swivel the cards in a way that now you're in a cop position. So once you do that, now you can have a nice angle to uh, your shuffle, right? So now this is facing them. The last covering action that I would recommend you to use is a squaring action. So pretend that you have your break or whatever, right? And then you have a spread. After you close the spread, you'll notice that the deck is all messy. So under the guise of squaring the sides of the deck, so here it is uh, one stroke back and then one stroke forward, under stroke forward, you're going to palm the cards and then you know, just square the deck. And that's, you know, your card palm. So those are three ways to uh, cover uh, cover the Hobson's or bottom palm. I'll go over them once again. So here you can have a a movement. So here you can ju just move the deck around or whatever. 
or a displacement or whatever you want to call it. The next is a overhand shuffle over here. Uh, oh, I butchered it. <laughs> All right, so over here, here, and then yeah, you can just overhand shuffle the cards. And then the last covering action is a squaring motion. So get your break, spread the cards, right? Over here. And yeah. So those are three methods to cover up your Hobson's or Bottom Palm. So that was it. That was the Hobson's or Bottom Palm. Uh, a relatively simple move, but you know, it, it has its merits. Uh, if you're curious about more Bottom Palms, I know the Expert Cart Technique has more. Uh, obviously, they described the Browie Bottom Palm, which is, you know, not my favorite technique, but it's out there. I believe Ertnase has his own techniques as well, but I'm not that fond of it. Personally, I think the Hofsons are a uh, bottom palm. As far as it goes, I think for a two-handed technique, I think that's my favorite technique. But if you're curious about a one-handed technique, Ernest Eric has a very nice uh, bottom palm technique, uh, one-handed bottom palm, palm technique that I think uh, most people use. So, I mean, most people is me. <laughs> but yeah, I like the one-handed version a lot more. Uh, ben Earl has his uh, has his work on the one-handed bottom palm, so you can go check that out. It's it's a different sort of handling on the one-handed bottom palm. Larry Jennings, I believe, is the one who came up with that extremely knacky uh, one-handed bottom palm, which I'm not going to show, but it's out there. But besides that, yeah, I think that's about it for this video. If you're curious about anything else, uh, just let me know down in the comments below.